Hello everyone, my name is Zaza Lupeluana uh, from Fundawande. I am the head of the Eastern Cape program. I am going to present to you our Eastern Cape program, which is a coaching program that we did in 2019 up until 2021. This was a program that was combining structured pedagogy and also coaching model, having lesson plans. It had six coaches and the ratio per coach was one is to five. This was a randomized selection program where schools were invited and across three districts. And we had uh, 29 schools that were treatment schools and also 29 schools that were control schools. And again, these are the schools that um, are using Isikosa language as their language of learning and teaching. So what motivated this uh, program? We all know about the PALS results, South African PALS results, uh, 2016, that showed that the learners that are able to read for meaning uh, in grade four were 78% that could not read for meaning. That meant that there's a quite a good amount of work that was needed uh, in the foundation phase in terms of uh, developing teachers in teaching reading for meaning. If we look at what programs have used this model, the coaching model, while we have numerous programs uh, globally, but I am going to just really look at, okay, what have we done here in South Africa? They cut a number of them. I would start with the, the GPNMS, which I fortunately was part of. I was a coach back then when we did the GPLMS. And also there was a work that was done by the Department of Education, basic um, education, uh, the early grade reading study, one and two. Again, we have also the Zenlit, the Zenex Foundation project, literacy project. Again, I was part of this program as a coach. And I think this is where mostly we have also drawn um, the learnings of how do we as Fundawande then move forward using a coaching model in our first intervention in 2019. So when it comes to coaching model, there's, in South Africa, there's no standardized coaching model uh, we're following. And um, in the Zenlit, the Zenex Foundation um, program that I was part of, we mainly used the, the GROW model, which really provided coaches structure of having their coaching uh, conversations uh, with teachers in terms of supporting the teachers um, in their classrooms when they do the lesson observation and reflective feedbacks. So therefore, it was kind of organic as I was in Funawande and starting the 2019 um, intervention that we used also in 2019, um, the GROW model for our coach, uh, capacitating our coaches to use these in their sessions. And um, this is really drawn from um, the work of um, say John Whitmore, and um, I have provided the, the links below. So if we look at the cause um, of the intervention, we had four uh, core or uh, important things with the, in this intervention, what we call it our intervention design. One, we provided LTSM, which is our learning and teaching support material that was in 2019 in the form of lesson plans. And we moved on the workbooks in 2021 and 2022. We also provided teachers with other teaching material like your alphabet freeze, your posters, and also graded readers, an anthology uh, of stories for each grade, for each learner. We also have as our core uh, activity, uh, content trainings. These were done by the coaches 
where teachers were trained in content on teaching reading in the foundation phase. Uh, this was done quarterly, um, as I've said, by the coaches. Again, the coaches then have um, had a, an activity, which was an in-class uh, support. This uh, looked like co-teaching uh, or lesson observation with, together with um, a reflective feedback. And in the afternoons, a coach would then uh, sit with the group of teachers whether this is a, a phase group or a grade um, group of teachers doing workshops on uh, or reinforcing a content that was trained on uh, or giving any support that they have picked up from the lesson observations that they did. And with the, when we talk about the lesson observations, we had a coach a day would see would have an opportunity to join two teachers a day and support those teachers in class. And lastly, as our um, activity, I think this is what makes now a slight different from the other interventions that I've mentioned before that has happened in South Africa. We thought that we should add uh, support of the heads of department. These are the people who are based in schools and they are the foundation phase heads of departments. How did we support these um, heads of departments? We enrolled uh, all the heads of departments of the 29 schools that were in treatment um, um, to the Rhodes course, which is an advanced certificate in teaching um, literacy in the foundation phase. This is a two year course, as I've said. And also we, we supported them in what we call, that is the QMS with this um, quality management system that is already existing in the system. This is what the HODs or the heads of departments together with the deputy principals um, are responsible for a system that provides them an opportunity to support teachers by going inside the classroom and do lesson observations and give them feedback, some kind of a development that is happening within the school. So we took um, some kind of an aligning by connecting to this part in terms of the HOD support, uh, supporting them in how to um, support, I mean, teachers during the, the um, lessons. When we look at the profile of a candidate, ideally, it back then, it was really going to be uh, great to get the easy course of speaking professional coaches, people who are trained to be coaches. But back then, uh, in South Africa, we had such a limited uh, number of Isikosa speaking coaches, people who are qualified as coaches. And, and we ended up kind of looking at our criteria. Uh, one, which is, okay, we need people that have um, a foundation phase experience, teaching in the foundation phase experience. And then we added um, an experience of being a head of the foundation phase um, um, in school as an experience, as an added experience, we need that people who have good literacy content knowledge and also some good communication skills. So these are the candidates that we ended up recruiting um, in um, 2019. Uh, however, this meant that we needed to then train the coaches that we recruited on coaching skills and also provide them more um, content knowledge uh, on teaching literacy so that they are able to be in a position to support the teachers. And so that's what happened with Funda One Day intervention in 2019. Let me just zoom in more then in terms of how did we do this? So one of the benefits that we had, 
with this group of coaches was that these are the people who were involved in creating the lesson plans that we were providing in 2019. So that was a benefit. So they knew or understood what was in the lesson plans or a guide uh, for the teacher, right? So that was a, a big one for us. And uh, as I've already mentioned that we also enrolled them for a two-year course, the advanced certificate in teaching literacy in the foundation phase that is being offered at Rhodes University from 2019. And we conducted some in-house uh, training, basic training, basic coaching skills, and we focused on really how to use grow model for conversations. So that was the provision that we made for the coaches in terms of upskilling them. And on top of that, as the head myself, I provided on-site visits. So I would schedule every quarter on-site visit and visited each coach and observed the coach giving support and we discuss uh, or do some reflective feedback on their coaching practice and how they can improve in their coaching practice. So this is the kind of, the, so far in 2019, that we provided the coaches that um, were in the schools. Just to give you an, a, a, a quick picture of what is in the Rhodes course, advanced certificate in foundation phase literacy teaching. Uh, we have 12 modules, the ones that we are seeing here on in um, CAPS reading activities, uh, teaching decoding, teaching vocabulary, teaching uh, comprehension, and, and also the assessment, reading assessment. As we, had, we have these um, 12 modules in our um, Rhodes course, Rhodes advanced certificate. Now, let's look at the evaluation. This was a randomized trial. We had evaluation that was conducted by Saldru and led by um, Dr. Kelly Addington. And the, the results, just for the first year, the results that we had showed a significant 0 0.17 sub deviation impact on the learners reading competencies. And uh, these comparing with the existing intervention in South Africa, we, we took them as good results. But unfortunately, this was just the first year. The, the pandemic that happened limited then what we could have seen in the second year of the intervention and in the third year of the intervention. Therefore, uh, the intervention took another 10 in 2020, 20, late in 2020, and also in 2021, now having to work on uh, catch up, catching up on the learning losses that happened in 2020. So the current clean results on coaching, um, on a coaching course were just for the first year. And um, these are the ones that I've just uh, mentioned. And I've also we have attached the, the full report of the evaluation. But to just continue more uh, in terms of the evaluation, so the learning gains, therefore, right, in the subtasks on, on which the intervention had a positive effect translated to 20 to 27 percent of a year's worth of learning for grade two. And this is 2019. Uh, you can have more reading on the on the on our evaluation reports. So, what were the biggest challenges? I think the most challenging one was building up a momentum. These are the schools that had, for the first time, a coaching intervention, and uh, the coaches had limited dosage where they were going to a school a quarter three times. And that meant that they had to see two, two teachers a day. In a big school, 
not all teachers will see for individual in class support. However, all teachers were seen during the afternoon, during workshop, workshops whereby they can benefit them. But in terms of the individual support, it was limiting those schools where we have four or five teachers per grade. And um, that, that's one. And more importantly, what we picked up with this limited dosage, a coach coming, going to school again um, after a week or week and a half, there was also some teachers who were not implementing. And teachers were implementing only when the coach comes. And it was difficult for the HODs to support because we had not started um, developing HODs uh, in the coaching strategies and or skills because we were allowing HODs to also get used to the program. So in this first year, that was a, a, our biggest challenge. Another biggest challenge as an intervention that started while we had contacted the districts, I think onboarding the districts thoroughly on um, what the program is all about uh, is, such, is such a crucial thing because the buy-in of the district officials is important in this way. Uh, they continue rather uh, supporting the schools and therefore knowing the program um, well is important. While we had in different districts uh, some officials that were really not aware or rather had limited knowledge of the program, they could therefore not support the teachers. Some would request things that they used to requesting instead of sticking to what the program was um, was doing. So I think there's a clash there and it's, we, we could see that it's leaving the teachers with such a big uh, confusion because monitoring by the officials is important to teachers. So our insights then and learnings, as I have already mentioned, is really an, a, a good or effective onboarding of the district officials on the program is really important so that there is alignment. There is alignment in the support that they give the teachers. There is also alignment in the monitoring that they are doing uh, with the teachers. And also having professional, now, now that we know, um, and we have opportunities, having professional coaches from the start of the program is such a good advantage because that way, the coaches are not learning or trying to understand the coaching skills while they are on the job. So it is quite important to really have coaches that are, are familiar with coaching, that are, they know the coaching, they are qualified coaches. Also, again, I cannot emphasize more the, the capacitating the heads of department of the foundation phase. This is very important because according to their roles that they play in schools, they are there to support the teachers and also develop the teachers. It was clear to us that it's important to have these OHODs, one, developed on the content knowledge, the pedagogical knowledge on teaching reading. And most importantly, to, to develop them in coaching skills as they have to support these, the, the teachers that they are working with. They have an opportunity of getting into class and also observe and give feedback. When we started doing this on the last year, we saw the difference that it, um, it made in terms of HODs understanding that, okay, this is, this is why, how I needed to support the, my teachers. So while sometimes the HODs can wear a compliance cap, now they had to wear a coaching cap on developing the teachers. So we, we definitely, this is our biggest one to an extent that it motivated us to create 
an instructional coaching course that where we collaborated with Dr. Pamela in Harvard and created a, a course, a coaching course, which is specifically meant to be done by the HODs and also by other people who are supporting teachers. And this course is currently, we started um, offering it last year, end of last year, and it is offered at Rhodes University. But this was a motivation for us to say, HODs or heads of departments uh, in the foundation phase in all schools need to have this um, um, kind of skills to support their teachers. So this is how the course looked like. It's a short course that is done over six weeks. And as I have said, it really focuses on providing specifically the HODs, the deputy principals, the subject, even the subject advisors on coaching and so that they are able to support. And this in encourages these individuals to be able to support at this level. This is what we call bringing in the coaching into the system, right? And we have, it looks at relationships, building relationships and setting priorities for their instructional coaching, types of coaching. It looks at coaching strategies and cycles and also how to build on now the internal professional um, learning communities and then it goes back and revise all the, the things that we have covered. So this is what the course is all about. This definitely in our 2019 uh, intervention, this was our biggest learning and it resulted in really the creation of our instructional coaching course.